Let's talk about something incredible. The hidden world inside every single one of us. The system that powers literally every move you make. We're going to dive deep into the musculoskeletal system, the amazing machine behind everything from a tiny blink to a massive jump. I mean, really stop and think about it. The simple act of jumping, it feels like you just do it, right? It's instantaneous. But what's actually happening under the surface to make that single leap possible? Well, it's way more complex than you think. Because what's really going on is this, this perfectly timed performance. It's like a biological symphony where millions of microscopic engines work together with a living, breathing architectural framework. So come on, let's peel back the layers and see how this whole thing actually works. All right, first up, we gotta talk about the power source, the engines that drive this entire operation, our muscles. Here's a fun one. You know where the word muscle comes from? It's from the Latin word moose for little mouse. Yep. Early anatomists thought that when a muscle contracted, it looked just like a little mouse scurrying around under the skin. You can't unsee that now, can you? But no matter what you call it or where it is in your body, every single muscle has one fundamental job, to contract, to shorten. That one simple pulling action is the force behind every single thing your body does. That's Okay, so that brings up a really interesting question. Your muscles are made of millions and millions of these tiny little fibers. How on earth do they all pull together to create enough force to, say, lift a heavy box? Well, to get that, we need to zoom way, way in. The magic is explained by something called the sliding filament theory. Okay, so here's how it goes down. First, a signal from your nerve shows up and PAM! Triggers a release of calcium. Think of calcium as the key that unlocks the whole process. That calcium lets these little protein heads, called myosin, grab onto special filaments. Next up is the power stroke. Using ATP, your body's energy fuel, those myosin heads pivot and pull, sliding the filaments past each other. Then they just let go, reset, and do it all over again, kind of walking along the filament. It's this incredible tiny dance happening millions of times a second. So how can we make these engines better? Well, there are two main ways. You've got aerobic exercise, like running, which is fantastic for building endurance. It boosts the blood and oxygen supply so your muscles can go for longer. Then you have resistance exercise, like weightlifting. This actually makes the muscle fibers create more of those little contractile filaments we just talked about, making them bigger and stronger. Two very different workouts for two very powerful results. Now that we've covered the engines, let's talk about the chassis, the frame that all these muscles are attached to. Let's talk about bones. You know, the word skeleton might come from this Greek word for a dried up body, but honestly, that could not be more wrong. Your bones aren't just some dry, dead scaffolding. They are living, breathing, dynamic organs that are constantly changing. And wow, do they multitask. I mean, sure, they give us support, our internal steel frame, but they also protect our most delicate organs, like our brain and heart. They act as levers for our muscles to pull on, they store crucial minerals like calcium, and they even create our blood cells inside their marrow. They do so much. Now, if you could slice a bone in half, you'd see it's not the same all the way through. On the outside, you have this super dense, smooth, compact bone. That's for strength. But on the inside, you've got this amazing, almost spiky looking spongy bone. It's incredibly strong, but also lightweight and it's where all the marrow is. This brings me to one of the coolest concepts, bone remodeling. Just think of your skeleton as your own personal bone bank. You've got these builder cells, osteoblasts, that are always making deposits by creating new bone. And then you have the bricker cells, the osteoclasts, making withdrawals, breaking down old bone to release calcium when your body needs it. It's this constant tug of war that rebuilds your skeleton based on your daily life. So. We have muscles, check. We have bones, check. But to actually get movement, you have to connect them in a way that allows things to bend and pivot. And that's where joints come into play. Joints have this amazing, almost contradictory dual role. Their job is to hold our rigid skeleton together securely, but at the same time, give it the flexibility it needs to move. It's a pretty brilliant design. And you've got a few different flavors of joints. Some are totally immovable, like the fibrous joints that stitch your skull together. Then you've got some that are just slightly movable, like the cartilaginous joints between your vertebrae. 
And then you have the freely movable synovial joints, like your knee or your shoulder. These are the ones that give us our awesome range of motion. Let's just geek out on these synovial joints for a second. The ends of the bones are capped with this slick, glassy cartilage for super smooth movement. The whole thing is wrapped in a tough capsule, and inside, there's a cavity filled with this lubricating fluid. Then, it's all strapped together with strong ligaments. It's just a masterpiece of biological engineering. Okay, let's zoom all the way out, because this entire system, it isn't static. It grows with us, it changes with us, from the moment we begin until our very last day. It's truly a system built for an entire lifetime. Think about the journey your skeleton has been on. As a fetus, it started as just a flexible cartilage model. As a baby, your skull had soft spots to help with birth and let your brain grow. Then, in your teens, your growth plates fused and you reached your full height. And as we get older, well, our bone mass naturally starts to decline. It's this constant, incredible evolution. And it's not just the bones. Our muscles change too. And this is a staggering fact. By the time you're 80, your muscle strength can decrease by about half, 50%. Just let that sink in. Half of the power that moves you through the world can just fade away if you're not careful. Which brings us to what might be the single most important rule for this entire system. It's a blunt warning, but it's true. Use it or lose it. Because if you don't use your muscles, they will get weaker and they will waste away. It's that simple. So what's the game plan? You have to keep the system moving, and the best way is with a mix of exercises. Aerobic activities or isotonic exercises like jogging are great for endurance and heart health, but it's those resistance or isometric activities like lifting weights that actually build muscle strength and tell your bones to get denser, actively fighting back against that decline. Look, at the end of the day, this symphony of muscles and bones inside you is one of the most incredible machines ever created. It is designed to move. So I'll leave you with a question that only you can answer. How are you going to keep your amazing machine in motion?